You may already be familiar with the statement creative is king, but why is that? Where does that statement actually come from? And why do I also believe as an agency owner that this is indeed true? I recently released a video talking about our e-com ad combo where I was saying how we mixed Facebook and TikTok together, which now leads me to recording this video because I've been getting questions about what I meant about the evolution of these platforms. So what I wanna talk about today is why is creative actually king and why have media buyers changed so much over the last few years. A media buyer five years ago to what a media buyer needs to do now is completely different. So in today's video, I wanna cover exactly that, talk about why is Creative King, why have media buyers roles changed, and what is the new modern way of doing media buying. My name is Justin and I'm the founder of Voizo Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in elevating thriving brands by simplifying e-commerce growth. So at the risk of repeating myself, I'll kind of get back into the story that I shared in one of my recent videos, which was how have platforms evolved through time? And I'll jump from there to actually make a segue into today's content. So with that being said, what I was covering in the recent video and what I've been talking a lot about with our team and our clients recently is the fact that platforms have evolved because consumer behaviors and the actual devices in which these platforms live on, so our phones, our computers, right? It basically everything has evolved through the last 10 years. If you think 10 years ago, the latest iPhone was the iPhone 5. iPhone 5 was one of the first iPhones with a 1080p camera, and it was not everybody who was fortunate enough to actually buy those new devices. So a lot of people were still on older iPhones, on older Androids. So most videos were shot in 480p. Cameras were no better than eight megapixel. And if you looked at Instagram, it was all pictures. If you looked at Facebook, it was mostly written text posts, so status updates, as well as pictures from time to time. So with that being said, the era was completely different. So when ads really became big, right? We're talking 2015 to 2017, kind of prime time of Facebook ads. Well, at that point, the algorithm was very new to Facebook. So algorithm was somewhat poor, if you may. So that's why they gave you a lot of options for you to use to target your customers. You could almost target somebody with their eye color. Okay, I might be exaggerating, but just that to say that you had so many more targeting capabilities than you have today because the algorithm was still new, it was learning, so you had a lot of control about who to target. And then through time, they actually started removing targeting capabilities, restrictions started appearing also on these platforms, algorithm got much better, and iOS 14 came in, which just removed and was kind of the final nail in the coffin of these advanced targeting metrics. So you're now in an era where if you look at Facebook, there's not that much you can do on the targeting side of things. You hear a lot of agencies or marketers, what they preach is broad. It's broad interest base or lookalikes. And, it, and again, it's very broad open audiences because there's not that much you can do anymore in terms of targeting. And this, this video comes after a recent discussion I had with one of my media buyers who's actually been in media buying since 2016, 2017. He was in the prime time of that era where all it took was great media buying skills in order to actually get good results. But that is no more. The role of a media buyer really evolved over the last two years. And I will compare that to just humans and human biology as a whole. So through time for about 200,000 years, humans were hunter gatherers. Then for about 7,000 years, they became sedentary and started you know, doing agriculture. And then just for the last 200 years or so, we had industrialization where we became, again, we, we adopted to a much different lifestyle. But if you look at the biology and the fundamentals of what makes us human, it has not changed much over the last couple of years, which is why you hear a lot of psychologists talking about evolution psychology and in the way that you know some of the stresses that we live today are because we were actually built that way a couple tens of thousands of years ago. Ago. So with that being said, we have not fundamentally changed, but what we if you compare a human from 100,000 years ago to a human of today, it's two completely different people. They're dressed differently, the way they speak is different, the way they act is different, but the fundamentals are similar. It's the same thing when you look at a media buyer. The way they speak, the things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis is completely different than five years ago. What I feel that a media bar needs to do nowadays is focus on creatives. I feel like the role of a creative strategist is somewhat blending with the media bar because 
truthfully, there's not really a place in the market for typical media buyers as there used to be. And I'll make the big disclaimer that I'm specifically talking about TikTok and Facebook right here. Google Ads, I feel it's its own beast and you still need some very good media buying skills to become a good Google ad buyer. But when it comes to Facebook and TikTok, I feel like you need more of a creative strategist position than an actual media buyer. So again, comparing what a media buyer had to work with about five years ago, they had a not so good algorithm where they had a lot more targeting and capabilities so they could pinpoint the exact person that they wanted to show them the worst creatives, but as it was the right customers, they would certainly buy it. Whereas right now it's kind of the opposite. You got really broad audiences because it's somewhat harder to pinpoint who you actually want to target. But luckily you have a much smaller algorithm that can actually based on your copy and creative combo, go out there and find the exact customers that you want. So where I'm going to with this is that the only two real levers you are left with in 2022, 2023 really is creative and copy combination. If you're not really playing with these two combos, if you're not really having leverage over these two aspects of your ad strategy, you will not be able to succeed with your ads. I think it's as simple as that. It's again, we've been trying it and we've tried many different ways with some accounts to just revive the accounts purely because we consolidated the accounts, changing the media buying structure. Does it help? Of course it does. Of course, there's a certain basis that you still need. But will that turn around an account and change a 1.5x ROAS to a 6 ROAS? Absolutely not. There's no way that this will lead to such a big change. The only way you'll actually get that much leverage is through your creative and copy combination. And you see it in many different ways, right? If you have a good copy or a good creative that resonates with the audience, Facebook and TikTok rewards you with better CPMs. So already there, you lower your ad costs. Then if you actually have a good copy and creative combo, you also get a better CTR, so you get more clicks. So it's like your two main metrics that impact everything else in your funnels, your two most top of funnel metrics, your CPM and your click-through rates are directly impacted by your copy and creative combination, which now again, kind of puts reaffirms the point that I'm trying to make in this video. So my role and my job as an agency owner is to kind of teach those ways to our team, right? Again, that media buyer has been a media buyer for a while now for five years, which completely different scheme of things five years ago to today. So my job is to actually guide them through this change. And what I'm doing essentially is usually what I teach in a YouTube video, I've either already talked about with our team or we'll simply link them to the video that I'm making as it's a resource for people out there and it's a resource for our internal team. I've honestly started to make this realization in early 2022. Um, I, we started the year still as a media buying agency and then I kept getting into the same problems with most clients that we, we just could not really get the creatives that we wanted. So what we ended up doing is creating a whole creative editing department at the agency. So so we could actually pump out Facebook ads and Google ads creatives as we wanted to. And then later on added UGC production services and then added UGC editing services to our already existing creative editing team. I'm kind of curious, let me know in the comments down below if you've actually found that creatives were the real leverage points in your ad strategy. I'm curious if you've actually still believe that doing good media buying can turn a whole ad account around or that if you only focus on creative and copy when actually trying to make optimizations within your ads. We've actually got down our free Facebook group in the description down below, which I strongly advise that you actually join. I've been giving lots of tips recently to people who actually post their ad account screenshots, ask for ways to optimize their accounts, uh, even CRO tips that we've had lately posted in the Facebook group. So again, make sure you join the group down in the description below. With that being said, if you're an e-commerce store owner making at least $50,000 a month with your brand and listening to this video, I'd love to actually meet with you face to face and speak about your creative strategy and the way you optimize your ads. So with that being said, you can book in a call with myself in the description down below for us to have a chat about your brand and also our offerings at the agency. On that note, make sure you check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips and I wish you guys a great day. Bye.